In this video, we'll look at a combinations word problem. So suppose you had seven math teachers, six science teachers, and four other teachers. In how many ways could you form a four-person committee if there were no restrictions? Well, the ways if there were no restrictions equals with no restrictions, all the teachers are equal. They're just regular people with no distinctions, no restrictions. We just add them up. What's 7 plus 6? 13 plus 4? 17. So we just choose equally, randomly, from our 17 people, our four-person committee. The question is, though, is it permutations or combinations? And the answer is, it's combinations, because it doesn't matter what order you pick the teachers. If you end up with science teacher 1 and 2 and math teacher 1 and 3, it doesn't matter what order you got them. You could have picked the two math teachers first, then the two science teachers, or vice versa, or 1 and 1. The main thing is order doesn't matter, and if order doesn't matter, it's combinations. So, from the 17 people, just choose 4 of them. Thus, 17 choose 4. We pull out our calculator and calculate using the NCR button, 17 choose 4, is 2,380. So in this situation, no restriction, there are 2,380 ways. Well, let's make it a little trickier, but not hard. Suppose you have to pick two math and two science teachers. Well, then the ways where you have two math and two science is equal to, and now we just have to be a little more careful. We can't just go 17 choose 4. That's not how it works. We have to choose two exactly from the math teachers. So of the seven math teachers, choose two of them. Same thing for the science teachers. Of the six science teachers, choose two of them. And what goes in between here is a multiplication symbol, or times. Because for each of these choices, each of these possible combinations, you multiply by all the science teacher combinations you had. Each one of those combinations multiplies by each other because each of them represents another possibility. What I mean is, you choose math teacher one and math teacher two, then you have to take into account that for that choice, there are all these possibilities of science teachers. And math teacher one, math teacher three, there's all these possibilities. In other words, it's multiplying because for each of these cases, you have all these cases again. And now let's calculate it. We can do it all at once in our calculator. What's seven choose two times six choose two? And you get 315. Therefore, there are 315 ways using this restriction. Okay, what if you were asked to have no science teachers? Well, that's actually not too hard. The ways to have no science, you can just write no science or no science teachers, just simply remove the science teachers from the choices. That is, get rid of this six and just choose from the seven and four, which is 11 other teachers, so there are four other, but together with the math, there are 11 teachers we can choose from, and we have to choose four. So with no science teachers, it's just 11 choose four, which the calculator tells me is 330. Yeah, therefore statement, this situation, there are 330 ways. The last situation isn't so simple. It isn't hard, but it's got a bunch of cases. It asks, can we form this four-person committee with at least two math teachers? There's two ways to do it. You could go the indirect method, which would be find the total number, which we already have, and subtract the case of no math teachers, and subtract the case of one math teacher. You can do that. I'm going to solve it just straight up and figure out three cases. Case one, one math teacher. Case two. Oh, that doesn't make sense. One math teacher won't do it. I need at least two. Let's call that two math teachers. Whoops, let's fix that. Case two, three math teachers. And case three, 
for math teachers. So, I make it clear this is the case I'm working on, and then I can label them all the same and just call it the number of ways, as long as it's clear, two math teachers. Okay, number of ways to choose two math teachers. Well, I have seven math teachers, choose two of them, and then times by, for every one of those choices, I have a bunch of other choices I can make. I pick from the other ten teachers, that's just the science and other teachers, choose two of them. Let's do them all, set them all up so you can see. The number of ways I can choose three math teachers would be take the seven math teachers, choose three of them, and multiply by from the other ten teachers, choose one of them. And finally, if I have to choose four math teachers, then I just go seven, choose four. You might also notice that you could write times of the other ten math teachers, choose zero. It won't matter because ten choose zero is just going to be one and when you multiply something by one it doesn't affect it. So you could have just left it out, just said seven choose four. Well let's do those calculations. Seven choose two times ten choose two. There's 945 ways to have two math teachers. Seven choose three times ten choose one. 350 and the last one, just 7 choose 4, or 7 choose 4 times 10 choose 0, but wasn't necessary. Either way, you get 35. So those are your possibilities. Two math teachers, three math teachers, four math teachers. Since these are separate cases, we add them together. The total possibilities is just 945, two math teachers, plus 350, three math teachers, plus 35, four math teachers. And again, use your calculator or do it in your head, whichever you prefer. And you get 1,330. Therefore, in this situation, there are 130 ways, or you can write possibilities. Doesn't matter, as long as you write a therefore statement. So these are some different parts to a combinations word problem.